Hi guys, welcome back. I hope you enjoyed the last video where we did a bit of a Q&A session on what you're gonna need to be able to do the same build of putting a 1.8 liter turbo in a Porsche Boxer. Uh, so hopefully it was helpful. Um, if you guys have any more questions, continue to shoot them at me over at the uh, comment section. If you have not taken a look at that video, uh, take a look at the link in the description below uh, to check it out. This video is gonna be all about the turbo that I selected for this build. Uh, there was a lot of questions around that, um, so I'm going to go ahead and have in the big screen um, an unboxing and show you exactly uh, how the turbo came and what it looks like and everything uh, while I kind of discuss um, how I went through the decision making process to get this turbo, uh, a little bit of background on the company that makes it, and how you guys can get your hands on one. So let's go ahead and get started. So there's a few different challenges uh, that I had to consider when it came to um, getting this turbo. Uh, first off, you know I wanted a car that uh, has a good amount of power throughout the whole power band, uh, not something that just has a lot of torque at the very end um, of the power band. I'm not a big fan of turbo lag, um, so I wanted something that spools pretty quickly. And in addition to that, being out here in Denver, Colorado. Um, the air is a lot less dense as far as the uh, air pressure um, than say for example um, you know the sea level so we wanted to make sure that uh, the turbo that I selected um, is one that's going to be able to like I said minimize uh, turbo lag as much as possible um, also I'm using the AEB head which is a large port head which is great for uh, high power and high boost applications uh, but the disadvantage is, is that you're not getting as much um, air velocity, uh, exhaust air velocity going into the turbine section of the, uh, the turbo. Uh, so therefore, spool times can be a little bit hurt um, by that. So, and also, you know, at the end of the day, it's still a 1.8 liter uh, motor. So the displacement is very low, so you're not getting a lot of air moving through there. So uh, that's a challenge, a constant challenge for big turbo builds uh, for this particular platform. And finally, you know, there's cost considerations. You know, I, I do have a budget for this build. I'm not trying to go too extreme. Um, so when I was looking at some of the different options of either going to uh, use some smaller turbos, um, you know, the price was, you know, pretty good there, but at the same time, wouldn't be able to hit the horsepower goals and they'll run out of breath pretty quickly. Um, and then you have the, turb uh, the hybrid options. Uh, where they take kind of, um, you know, two different, the best of both worlds kind of is what they, they market it as. Uh, but when you look at the price for those hybrids, it doesn't really make sense, uh, in my opinion, uh, to go that direction. I'd rather go with a big uh, turbo and put it into this car and just optimize the turbo for, uh, like I said, reducing spool time and, uh, and, and increasing boost pressure as early as possible in the um, RPM band. So that left me with very few options. Uh, the two turbos that were, I was considering is uh, kind of an old classic uh, for the 1.8 liter turbo, which is the GT28 RS, uh, which is used quite quite a, a bit, and then the G25-550. So I mentioned in a previous video that I was looking at the G25-550, and um, when I started going to spec it out to, to you know pull the trigger on purchasing it, uh, I saw the price of it and it stopped me cold. Uh, because the price for the turbo alone, um, you know, as far as the super core and the turbine housing, um, was at two thousand three hundred dollars um, before tax and all that kind of stuff. So, and then that's not even counting in the exhaust manifold that I'll have to use in order to uh, get the best out of this turbo. So that made me start asking around of like, what other options are there if I want this type of performance but not spend, you know, all that money on it. So. I spoke to a gentleman named uh, Mike Hood. He's been in the 1.8 liter turbo community for quite some time, kind of told him about uh, what I was looking for. And he recommended me to talk to a company called Rack Turbo. Uh, Rack Turbo is out of uh, uh, Las Vegas, Nevada. 
Uh, they've been around for about two years as a family run business. Um, the owner, his name is Ruben. Um, he's been, you know, in the, the kind of turbo community, uh, I'm sorry, you know, just turbos as far as selling them and, uh, and, you know, uh, working with them and everything for, for quite some time from what I understand. Um, so I decided to go ahead and check them out and see, uh, you know, and learn a little bit more about them. So I went to their Facebook page and first thing, uh, I looked for, uh, was to see if there was any negative reviews, couldn't find anything, just all pretty much positive, uh, um, feedback about the turbos and how they're performing on the vehicle so that gave me some warm and fuzzies so I decided to take the next step which was just to reach out to them so when I reached out to them I told them what I was looking for and the turbo that I was interested in and they told me that they had a solution for the GT25-550 that was a lot cheaper um, just because it's pretty much their kind of replica or, or um, you know model after that uh, particular uh, turbo um, and they call it the R49-550 and so at first I was a little bit skeptical because you know whenever you hear kind of the replicas or things of that nature you're always worried about uh, quality so that kind of went to a number of questions I had as far as you know what is their process as far as uh, getting the turbos out the door uh, what is their warranty and things of that nature uh, so they told me that they take the turbos uh, components in from the, their suppliers uh, they go ahead and clean them up, uh, do a quality uh, assurance check on them, and then they VSR balance them, reassemble it, and then go ahead and send it off to the customer. And then they have a one-year warranty along with it, which is kind of the same as Garrett. And um, I was, you know, I, that kind of piqued my interest. So, you know, it seemed pretty interesting to me. Um, so I asked, you know, is there another turbo that you maybe recommend that you guys do that's kind of your own build, um, you know, versus this one? Um, and they recommend to, to continue on with the uh, R49-550 because that turbo, I guess, is built a little bit more robust than um, a lot of turbos that are out there because uh, they have four seals on it. Um, I then asked, you know, to see exactly, you know, how do they build it? What's the differences in parts between the Garrett version and theirs? Um, Ruben, who I was in, I was, I found out later that I was speaking to, it's very helpful. Sent me images of the, the differences between the two uh, bearings and just kind of walk through exactly what they do. And uh, because I felt pretty good about the explanation and uh, the customer service I had so far, I went ahead and decided to pull the trigger. So that, uh, that setup ended up costing about $1,000 less than what I would be paying normally for the Garrett. Now, of course, there's always that adage of you get what you pay for. Now, I've heard a lot of good things, like I said, about this turbo. Um, and you know, there's uh, some folks out there when I shared this, that wanted to, you know, get their hands also on this, uh, this turbo, but, um, there's also some people that, you know, had some hate about it without knowing really about the company or how everything uh, worked together. Uh, this one person actually said, um, all right, sorry, I had to find the quote. So the person said, it's unfortunate that you bought a Chinese clone. If you're lucky, you'll get 80% of the performance for 60% of the price. Um, so that was, I find that uh, comment pretty interesting because this person has no clue about the turbo, the company, the process, anything. And you get stuff like this throughout the internet all the time. Um, the thing is, uh, this is actually what pushed me to purchase the turbo. Because when I was doing a lot of research for what turbo would be best, and I was looking at um, you know all the different brands, and then even some brands that are new entrants, there's not a lot of good data out there. There's just a lot of hearsay and a lot of word of mouth, and you know people kind of regurgitating uh, bad information uh, or even good information, but we don't really know because there's just no there's nothing but just words and comments. So um, why I figure why not go ahead and share with you guys that are the viewers of, of this channel uh, with another data point of a, a new entrant uh, that's built here in the United States, um, family owned business, give these folks a shot and see what it can do. If it performs, then great, there's another option for you. If it doesn't, then you guys know you can, you know, not, not pur purchase the, the turbo from them. Um, but either way it goes, you guys will be more empowered to make a decision. Because uh, we all know what a Garrett can do, but hey, there's a lot of new guys that are coming out here in the in the market, mm -hmm. and let's see, let's you know, let's see what they can do and and how their their uh, their products perform. So, uh, full disclosure, I purchased this turbo outright with my own money, uh, not being paid to make this video for Rack Turbo or anything like that. So, 
Um, it is what it is. Um, if you guys are interested in purchasing this turbo, I did reach out to them to see if there was any kind of discount that they could give um, our subscribers or people who are watching this video, and they did agree to providing a discount. If you're interested in it, um, look in the description below, and I'll provide some information on how we can get you connected and go from there. Um, but yeah, that's, that's it. That's where I'm at with the turbo and uh, I feel pretty good about the decision and I can finally sleep better at night uh, now that this is behind me. In the next video, I'm going to continue on with where I'm at on the build, uh, discuss uh, the ECU that I selected and what I'm going to need to do to get it working uh, with the AEB motor and uh, just maybe give you guys just a general update on um, uh, different parts that need to be purchased and where I'm at on the cost. So I appreciate you guys taking the time to watch this video. Please like, subscribe, share with your friends. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. And uh, I look forward to seeing you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.